har kajt sim ri prip tan asat ga kniam roti pot ka vat mo Sometimes, as I may know, you know, uh, from the perspective of someone who is not really good at music, uh, you know, some songs they come up very po- quickly. They become popular very quickly. Some other songs uh, they also become popular very quickly, mm-hmm. and at the same time they go out of the league also mm-hmm. very quickly. But uh, in case of Mr. Sun Si Samut, which is also your, you know, your your model, mm-hmm. the, the one of the most uh, popular Cambodian. Mus- musician in the 1960s, uh, he is still very popular even until today. You know, mm. across decades and across generation of people. Mm. Um, in order for people to listen to your song for quite a long time, is there mm. any tip? You know, like technical tip, for example. Oh, the melody have to be in this. You know, mm. you know structure, or you know, does the lyric has to represent? You know, the timeless. Human experience, for example, love. Love is timeless. Mm-hmm. It happens to all generation. Or maybe you know the the lyric has to be simple so that people can sing along. Mm. That is how you keep people remembering your name and your song. Mm. I mean, is there any like technicality that you know musician exploit mm. in order for their music to go a very long way into the future? Mm. I think you already answered your question a little bit um, in, in your examples. Um, I I I couldn't say really. I think I think why why do songs become popular over time? Yes, they need to be good and timeless and and have depth in them, depth of feeling or, or depth of music. But you never know, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I think for since he's somewhat amazing music, uh, the story. Uh, and and the fact that he was you know one of the one of the last uh, you know before the war mm, uh, yeah. there's a, there's a it, it's something that people hang on to as a as a, as a story like a remedy for their feeling absolutely yeah, yeah and I and I and I see that in my own family and I see it all, all around you know and and that's a, a kind of nostalgia but it's also got some pain in it too you know um, but w- as a songwriter now if I don't know if you should plan to have a timeless song. You know, it's it's. Of course, it makes sense. Uh, you know, like yeah. it's a. T- I, I would want to have a timeless song, but if you try and have a timeless song, I think people can. Uh, they can tell. You know, yeah, yeah. Y- you should just always aim to to have a, a song that's very good quality, not in terms of technical, but in in terms of being close to what you're trying to say and close to who you are, the story you're trying to tell. And if you're lucky, that story resonates with people now and into the future. And like you suggested, love is always the timeless thing, the timeless yeah. thing, because it's always a timeless inspiration and a timeless problem for everyone, you know, so it's constantly people working through those things, you know. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's hard to predict, very hard to predict, hard to give advice, but as close as you could get would be, be exactly who you are, and maybe that will resonate with other people. Yes, yeah. Paul. You mentioned the dilemma between making money, sometimes, mm. okay, between making money and making music. Sometimes they don't go along with each other, and um, for some job, other job, Beside music, they also face that same nature. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, what what is your message? I mean, for those who love music, mm-hmm. and at the same time, you know, money can be a bit problematic sometimes. So, how do you? I mean, if you if someone who loves music come and ask you for your consultant on mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. how would you explain in <laughs> in general term? <laughs> yeah. Well. It's it's about this. It's a kind of a question of risk, really. You know, yeah, yeah. if you want to give a hundred percent of your time and energy to music, then that's a big risk because if you don't succeed, you maybe you've lost a lot of uh, opportunity in your life that you could have used towards something else. But if you have a lot of talent and a lot of drive, maybe that's the right thing to do. So mm. sometimes. And my advice, I can tell if someone's very special and they've got what it takes to be a star or be 
build a career in music and sometimes they don't you know and so it depends what the person what skills they already have and what how motivated they are I mean I think it's smart to um, uh, there's an English phrase you know don't put all your eggs in one basket there's probably a Khmer equivalent yeah. uh, if you build if you have another interest that's not music and you can build that at the same time then you you don't risk everything and probably the people around you appreciate that your family or would appreciate that you're not building everything in one one career that's very hard to make money and maybe you're doing something else at the same time like study or or uh, another kind of job as well i think that's smart mm. Yes, Bong. So again, making music is not just sitting in the studio and you know hitting keyboards and not like that. It involves stuff deeper than that over time. Yeah, you know? yeah. But that that time in the studio is also important, important because you can discover things through the process of making music and the inspiration. Hey, inspiration can be YouTube. You know, it can be sitting on a computer, but it's not. It's as the personal only thing, yeah, yeah. as experiencing life and so my I think you can do both you can spend time in the room focusing and making music and, and actually playing and discovering and you can spend time just going through your life and building up stories that you can turn into music <laughs>